And I believe that if we only knew what God has done in our life, we praise Him with every breath in our body, right? Because we only praise Him, I think, sometimes because of the things we can see and the things that we know that He's done. But I want you to know that our God has done so much for us and our little finite minds cannot comprehend the infinite glory of who our God is. Amen? And what he's done. And my little granddaughter would like to open us up in a word of prayer. Come on up here, Mr. Kaylee, bud. I'm going to give you the microphone. Look at there. Go ahead and open us up with prayer, sister. Dear Heavenly Father, please help us all today. Help everyone who is sick and ill. Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. You know, guys, today I'm going to talk about something that you've been watching on the news, that I've been watching on the news for the last couple of months, and I want to talk to you today about a place called Israel. And the reason why Israel is so important is because, brothers and sisters, what's happening in Israel is really corresponding what's happening with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ comes back, how many of y'all know he ain't coming back to America, per se, for that last time. He, yes, he's coming back to rapture out the church. But after that, when he comes back, he ain't coming back into America. He's coming back to Israel where he's going to place his foot down on the Mount of Olives. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that's where he's going to set up his 1,000-year reign of eternal justice. And I want you to know the reason why we need to talk about Israel is because, brothers and sisters, when we talk about Israel... We're talking about you and I. We're talking about our heritage also. Amen. You know, I brought a coin with me today. And, and if I flip this coin, it's always going to land on either heads or tails. And I want you to know that if I flip it a hundred times, chances are that it's going to land on heads 50% of the time. If I flipped it 500 times, chances are it's going to land on heads 250 times. If I flipped it a thousand times, chances are one in 500 times, I want you to know it's going to land on heads. But you know what, brothers and sisters, the odds of Israel being here today exactly as they are, are slim to nothing. Israel has been flipped and flipped and flipped for the last 4,000 years. They're a little tiny nation the size of New Jersey, surrounded on every side by every possible enemy and every possible mean. And the odds of Israel existing today isn't 50%. The odds of Israel existing today is zero. But brothers and sisters, do you know why Israel is still here today? It's because God said so. And if God has said it, that settles it. You see, brothers and sisters, God has a final word on Israel, and God has a final word on you and I. Amen? Praise the Lord. So if you have your Bibles today, and I pray that you do, we're going to be looking in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37, we're going to talk about something that's so, just thrown out there so often inside the world today, about the valley of the dry dead bones but the reason why it's so important to talk about Ezekiel today because what we're seeing happening in Israel is actually a fulfillment of some of the prophecy found in Ezekiel. We started this scripture back in February, I think, 2020. And I want us to dig a little bit deeper here today. So we're going to be looking at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, starting in verse number 1. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say oh no. Brother, I can always count on Malachi for my own nose. Thank you, brother. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, starting in verse number 1. The Bible says that the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And it caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, I said, O oh, Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy. Prophesy upon the bones. Say unto them, O oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then he said unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man. Say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. The breath came into them. They lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried up, our hope is lost, we are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy, say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves, cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened up your graves, O my people, brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live. I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. We can stop right there, couldn't we? There's so much power in the word of the Lord, it's unbelievable. The title of my message today, brothers and sisters, is them dry, dead bones of Israel. Past, present, and future. In our scripture today, Israel had turned its back upon God. They had turned their back upon God's word, God's will, and God's way. They had built altars to false dead gods. And because of this, God allowed them to be taken into captivity by the enemy, the Babylonians. And God removed his spirit from their presence. And all that was left in the eyes of God when he removed his presence was nothing but dead men bones. Brothers and sisters, you show me a church where God has removed his spirit. And I'll show you a social club full of dead men bones. Amen? Because, brothers and sisters, what makes this church, the church of Jesus Christ, isn't those fine padded pews. It's not a cross upon the steeple. It's not a stained glass window. What makes this church, Mount Olive, the part of the church of Jesus Christ, is God's Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, there's several fundamental truths I want to start with. The first thing I want you to notice in verse number 1, the Bible says that the hand of the Lord, the hand of God was upon Ezekiel, and he took him out to a valley full of dry, dead, dusty bones. Now, what happened to Ezekiel, understand, to this world was seemingly impossible. But do y'all know why it wasn't impossible? Because the Bible says that the hand of God was upon Ezekiel. Brothers and sisters, how many of y'all know today that if the hand of God is upon you, if the hand of God is upon your marriage, if the hand of God is upon your church, nothing is impossible. Amen? You see, brothers and sisters, we need to get a hold of that like a Baptist uh, on a plate of fried chicken. Amen? Brothers and sisters, when the hand of God is upon us, Nothing is impossible today. Amen. You know, the reason why y'all woke up this morning is because the hand of God is upon you. The reason why your test results come back negative instead of positive is because the hand of God is upon you. The reason why Sister Linda and Brother Roy are here today, understand, despite their pain, despite their problems today, y'all know why? Because the hand of God is upon that woman. Amen. And brothers and sisters, when the hand of God is upon you, nothing is impossible. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know when the hand of God is upon you, sickness cannot stop you. 
Understand, governments cannot silence you. Devils cannot defeat you. And the grave, it cannot hold you because the hand of God. Brothers and sisters, I believe that the hand of God is upon this church today. Do y'all believe that? I believe that the hand of God is with Mount Olive today. And because the hand of God is upon this church, I want you to know that there is no power of hell. And there is no scheme of man that can stop the blood-washed church of Jesus Christ. Can we give God some praise? Amen. Praise the Lord. Next thing, notice in verse number 1, the Bible says that Ezekiel, he was carried out in the Spirit. Now let me stop right here. Whenever you mention the Holy Spirit, whenever you mention Spirit-filled in a Baptist church, people start getting a little bit nervous. Amen? But brothers and sisters, how many of y'all know today that the sweet Holy Spirit isn't anyone to be nervous about? Amen. Brothers and sisters, Ephesians 4 says that we've been sealed unto the day of our redemption by and through the, uh, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, which means you can't lose your salvation. Amen. And y'all know why? Because the world didn't give you your salvation, and the world can't take it away. Amen. Praise the Lord. And for, so, 2 Corinthians 3, the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. And, you know, brothers and sisters, if you look into the world today and you look into the church today, you see so many people today who are bound. It looks like they're just sad, mad, dead, and bled. And you know what, brothers and sisters, they may have been set free through the Spirit of God, but they've allowed the things in their life to shackle them again. But brothers and sisters, we have freedom in the Spirit of God. Are you tired of being shackled to your past? Are you tired of being shackled to your pain? Do you want to be set free from the burden of your sins? Then brothers and sisters, come to Jesus today and let God fill you with his Holy Spirit. He'll change you, brothers and sisters. Understand, he'll change your destiny. He'll change your purpose. He'll change your destination. Brothers and sisters, the sweet Holy Spirit will give you a new way to walk. He'll give you a new way to talk. He'll give you a new way to shout. He'll give you a new way to dress. Brothers and sisters, he'll take those chains that have bound and confound you, and he'll free you, and he'll set you free. Amen? Because the Bible says, to whom the Son sets free, you are free indeed. Amen? Can I ask you this morning? How many of you here today have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ? How many of y'all here today are going to heaven by the sweet spirit of God? Can we give God some praise in the house of the Lord? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, if we want revival in this church, and how many of y'all here today want revival? Amen? If we want revival in this church, if we want stability in our homes, and we want the power of God in our lives, we must learn to live, love, and operate under the leading and the guiding and the power of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Amen. You know, Acts 1.8 says that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power to be a witness unto me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, not a witness unto our denomination, not a witness unto our affiliation, but a witness unto God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, there is a power today that time cannot touch. There's a power today that man cannot stop. There is a power today that the devil cannot uh, uh, defeat. That's the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know God has called us. God has called this church to turn the world upside down with his power. But brothers and sisters, how many of y'all know it ain't going to be by you? And it ain't going to be by me. And it's not going to be by us. It's going to be by him. It's going to be by his sweet Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. Next notice in verse number one, still number one. Maybe we'll get out. That Ezekiel was taken out to a valley full of dry, dead, dusty, dislocated bones. This was a representation of the whole nation of Israel. You see, Israel, they have forsaken the commandments of God. They 
they've turned their backs upon God's will and God's way. They built altars to false dead gods. And when they did this, God pulled back. God removed his spirit from their presence, and all that was left was a graveyard full of dead men's bones. Brothers and sisters, Israel had lost his first love. You see, now don't get me wrong, they were still worshiping at the altar of God. But at the same time, they were worshiping at the altar of Baal. Brothers and sisters, if you don't walk out of here with nothing else under your belt, know this. God don't play that. God does not play that. The Bible tells us that God is a jealous God. And understand, he won't share his worship. God won't share his glory. God won't share his deity with anyone or anything. Either God will rule and rule supreme over all of your lives, or he will not rule at all in your life. God ain't going to play second fiddle to no one. Amen? Now, don't get me wrong. You see, Israel, they were still coming to church. They were still singing God's praise. They were still worshiping at the altar of God, but at the same time worshiping at the altar of Baal. In Isaiah 29, 13, God said of Israel that they honor me with their lips, but your hearts. God said their hearts were far from me. You see, they were being hypocritical in their walk with God. Understand, brothers and sisters, they were still straddling the fence. They had one foot in, and they had one foot out. They were living in the world, but they was also living with God. God don't play that. You see, brothers and sisters, God don't want our lip service, does he? God wants our heart service today, and God deserves our heart service today. We are to love the Lord our God with all of our hearts, mind soul, and strength. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in other words, don't just be talking about it. God says you be about it. He said, if you're going to serve me, then serve me. If you're going to make me the Lord of your life, then make me the Lord of your life. Give me 100%. You see, brothers and sisters, y'all can be here today. I can be here today in this church, and we can be going through the motion. We're going to be singing our songs of praise to God. You can give all your tithes unto the Lord. You can be teaching Sunday school. You can preach in this pulpit. And you can still be out of the will of God. And you know why? Because man sees what you do. God knows why you do it. God knows our heart today. So can I ask you again? What's in your heart? What's in your heart today? Have you come today to worship the one true God? Or have you come to church? There's a difference. Have you come here today to sing songs? Or have you come today to worship the Lord? There's a difference. Brothers and sisters, God knows our hearts today. Next notice in verse number three. That God asked Ezekiel a question. He asked Ezekiel Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I want you to look at Ezekiel's answer. Ezekiel says to God, oh God, you know. Amen. You see, Ezekiel knew that the only hope for the nation of Israel, if there was hope, was it going to be found in God and God alone. And brothers and sisters, how many of y'all know today that's the same thing for this nation that we live in today? Amen? Brothers and sisters, our hope today isn't found in this, in this sin-sick world. Our hope today is not found in this godless administration in the White House. Our hope today is not found in the corrupt Congress. Our hope today is found in God. It's found in the Bible. It's found in the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible psalmist said that some men trust in horses. Some men trust in chariots. But we will trust in the name of our God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I wasn't going to go here, but let me go here. This country is founded on the gospel of Jesus Christ. 52 of the 55 men who wrote and signed the constitution of this great country were members of the church of Jesus Christ. But something's happened. 
right? We've turned our backs upon God's word, God's will, and God's way. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, our only hope today is to turn back to God. We need to turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We need to turn back to the God who created the heavens and the earth with the spoken word. We need to turn back to the God who gave his only begotten son by which we can be saved. Our only hope today is to found in the Lord. Amen? I'm going to preach on that next week, I think. Next notice in verses number 4, 7, and 9. That God tells Ezekiel over and over again to prophesy upon the bones of Israel. God was telling them to speak the word of God. And when he did, the Bible tells us that life came to the dead bones of, Eze of Israel. Now hold on, brothers and sisters. I want you to know that Ezekiel prophesied and spoke the word of God over the dead bones of Israel uh, 600 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. Y'all hold on. This happened like in 594 B.C., before Christ. Understand, Ezekiel spoke the word of God. But brothers and sisters, what was spoken in 593 or 594 B.C., understand, came to pass. You ready? May 14th, 1948. Understand, almost 3,000 years later, Ezekiel spoke it. God's word came true. On May 14th, 1948, when the dead and scattered bones of Israel came back together to be born a nation overnight. Sovereign, holy, empowered by the God of all creation. And remember, do y'all know, remember why? Because God said so. God said it was going to happen and it happened. And if God has said it, how many of y'all know today that settles it? Amen. Brothers and sisters, if God has said it, it shall come to pass. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if God has said it, you can take it to the bank. You can cash that check because I promise you heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. Amen. You know, I saw a bumper sticker one time driving down the road. And on this bumper sticker, it said, God said it. I believe it. That settles it. That bumper sticker's wrong. You see, it don't matter whether you believe it or not. If God has said it, that settles it. You let every man, you let every devil, you let every demon in hell be a lie, but we need to let God be true today. If God has said it, it shall come to pass. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And the good news today, brothers and sisters, is this. If God can bring life to the dead bones of Israel by his spoken word, then God can bring life to our dead marriages. God can bring life to our dead ministries. God can bring life to this dead nation. Brothers and sisters, we have a God today of resurrection power. Amen? But brothers and sisters, how many of y'all know if we want what God gave Israel? We need to do what Ezekiel did, and that is to speak the word of God. We need to speak the word of the Lord. This Bible is the undeniable, undefiable, unbreakable, unshakable, untaintable, unstoppable, holy word of the Lord. Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, 21, thus Save the Lord. We need to speak the word of God. Brothers and sisters, but I'm not talking about that craziness that we see on TV all the time. I'm not talking about name it and claim it. I'm not talking about profess and possess. I'm not talking about that blabbing and grabbing nonsense. Brothers and sisters, I'm talking about taking God and God's word and speaking it over our lives. Taking the word of God, the promises of God, and speak them over our children. We need to speak them over our marriages and speak them over our nation. Amen? Brothers and sisters, I want you to know there's a power today. There's a power today that the world can't contain. There's a power today that the grave can't stop. There's a power today the devil can't defeat. That's the power of the word of the Lord. 
brothers and sisters, whether it is a written word, whether it's the spoken word, or whether it's the prophetic word, there is power today. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. They will divide the soul from the spirit, the joints from the marrow. And how many of y'all know, brothers and sisters, if it can take, divide the soul from the spirit, then how many of y'all know that the word of God can take the alcohol out of an alcoholic? It can take the drugs out of a drug addict. The word of God is sharp and powerful. Understand, there is no statute of limitation on God's word or God's power. If God has said it, it still happens here today. So I challenge you here today to take up the sword of the Spirit. Take a stand on God's word. Take a stand on the fact that God's word is true. Yea and amen. I challenge you. I challenge all of you, speak the word of God over your families. Speak the word of God over your children. Speak the word of God over your circumstances. Because life is found in the word of the Lord. Understand, I don't know how I'm going to make it, but the word of God says I'm going to keep on stepping. My body may be racked in cancer, but the word of God says that our God is Jehovah Rophe, the God who heals my body. Understand, I may not know which way I'm going to go, but I got a God today who tells me that he will direct my feet. He'll direct my steps. He'll make me go the way that he would have me go if I seek his word today. And lastly, I want you to notice that even though Israel had messed up, and how many of y'all here today have ever messed up? Right? <laughs> even though they had turned their backs upon God I'm not going to ask that question I want you to know that God didn't give up on Israel and I want you to know the good news this morning from heaven itself is that God hasn't given up on you no matter what you've done no matter where you've been no matter how far you've fallen in your walk with God, God has not given up on you. If you'll repent and come back to God, I want you to know that God can make you new again. Amen. Brothers and sisters, one of the most powerful scriptures I find in God's word that I hang to is found in the book of Joel chapter 2. Let me tell you what it says. You see, Israel had already turned its back upon God again again and again. Israel's history was God blessed them. They turned away from God. They got out in the weeds. God said, if you'll repent and come back to me, I'll make you new again. That's what God was saying in the book of Joel. Israel had turned its back upon God. They began chasing after the world. They turned their back upon the Lord. And brothers and sisters, God allowed them God allowed a drought to come into the land of Israel. And it dried up all the vegetation. All you cattle farmers know what it is to have a hay field full of dry, dead grass. But it wasn't enough that everything was dead. God says, it's dead, but I'm also going to have the destruction come. And understand, God sent a locust, a plague of locusts to devour what was left in the land. But in the middle of Israel's waywardness in the middle of Israel not being who they should be God told Israel that if you will simply repent if you'll repent and return unto me God said I will restore unto you all the years that the locusts have devoured not just year years not just a piece. God says, I'm going to give it all back to you. But you got to repent and you got to return unto me. You see, brothers and sisters, we got a God of restoration power today. You see, so many people today, brothers and sisters, we've wandered away from God. So many folks today are out there in the weeds of this world. We've gotten off track. 
like Israel. So many of us here today, including myself, have turned their backs upon God. We've turned our backs upon God's word. We turned our backs upon God's will. And we turned our backs upon God's way. But the good news is more than is this. We have a God of second chances. How many of y'all here today have ever needed a second chance? How many of y'all have ever needed a third chance? Fourth chance? Right? The good news here today, brothers and sisters, is that we have a God of second chances. We have a God of third chances. We have a God today of restoration power. And the good news today is that if we if got what God offered Israel, God offers you today. But if you're going to get what Israel got, you got to do what Israel did. Understand we have to repent. We have to turn from our wicked ways. And we need to return to God. And then God can restore all that you lost. You see, the good news this morning, brothers and sisters, is that God can restore your families. Amen? God can restore your life. God can restore your hopes and your dreams. God can restore your relationship with your children. We have a God of restoration power. But you got to return to God. God ain't going to bless a mess. The first step to restoration is coming back to God. Return unto the Lord. You see, that's what this altar is all about, right? It's when we know we're wrong. It's when we know that we need God. It's when we, the children of our Father, and we know we've broken the Father's heart, it's when we turn from our sins and we come back to the Lord, we get down on our knees, we ask God to forgive us of our sins. And the wonderful thing is this, God said that if we'll ask God to forgive us, He is faithful. Faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. That he'll take our sins, though they may be a scarlet. God said, I'll take those sins that you committed, and I will cast them as far as the east is from the west. I will drown them in the depths of the sea, never more to mention them again. So when the devil brings up your past, all you got to do is tell him it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. Because God's not bringing it back up. So if someone brings it back up, it's not of God, because God said, I done forgot it. But you had to come back to God. Maybe you're here today, and like Israel, you don't know it. But right now, you have dry, dead bones. See, right now, there's a lot of folks in this world who are dead. We got a lot of dead men walking in this world. Because they've never found, and they've never committed, and they've never repented, and they've never been restored through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, you may be a church goer, but that's not enough. You may have your name on the rose of Mount Olive, that's not enough. In order to be made alive, it's only going to be found in the blood of Jesus Christ. Through the blood of Jesus, we can find forgiveness. Through the blood of Jesus, we can find restoration. Through the blood of Jesus, this nation can turn back to God. Through the blood of Jesus, we can be made whole. So I'm going to ask us all to stand if we can. And if you're here today, and like me, you've wandered. And you've gotten off in the weeds. The good news here today is that you can be restored unto God. That's just between you and the Lord. Maybe you're here today and you're looking for a church home. I can't offer you nothing that these big churches are offering everybody nowadays. But I can offer you this. I can offer you Jesus. I can offer you the cross. I can offer you forgiveness. And it's found in the blood of Jesus. This church opens its doors for those who would come 
who are members of the church of Jesus Christ. The only prerequisite we have is that you belong to Jesus, and we'll work everything else out. Maybe you're here today and you've never given your life to the Lord. You're not a Christian. You've never given your life to Jesus. Oh, you've come to church maybe, occasionally. But to be a Christian is to be set free. If you're here today and you've never been to Jesus, if you'll come, ask God to forgive you of your sins and turn from those wicked ways. God will wash you and God will cleanse you and God will make a new path in your life. He'll give you a new destiny. He'll give you a new destination. He'll give you heaven. But you got to come. So as we sing, Brother Steve.